Now our study of differential calculus begins in earnest. We'll take a look at finding derivatives of functions with the form y equals a x to the n, where a is a real number, any real number, and n is a rational number, so um, a whole number, an integer, a fraction. So let's take a look at this table below. The challenge here is going to be finding a rule that changes f of x uh, into f prime of x. So the rule has to be the same rule for all five cases here. So please press pause now to see if you can find a rule. Okay, um, a rule is fairly easy to make for the first three columns, but then after that it seems like uh, we run into some trouble. But there is indeed a rule that changes f of x into f prime of x no matter what form it takes as long as it has this form here and here's the rule so uh, if I want to if I have this function to find the derivative function and his, this is a notation new notation we'll talk about this in a, in a, in a moment but the derivative is going to be found by taking the exponent of x and multiplying it times our coefficient to find this new coefficient. And then our exponent minus 1 will be our new exponent. So let's go back to our examples over here and see apply the rule. So 2 times 1 is 2. 2 minus 1 is 1. Okay, so those will follow suit. How about this one? 5 times 2 is 10. 5 minus 1 is 4. So that works. Well, what about this one, this last one? We have to go back to the idea that x the square root of x is the same as x to the one-half power. Okay, now we can apply our rule. One-half times one is one-half, and then half minus one is negative half. Now, x to the negative half power is the same thing as x, one over x to the positive one-half power. And then, of course, we can change x to the one-half power to square root again. So what we've done, we've come full circle and we get an answer like this. If that was a little bit confusing, you might want to brush up on your thirds a little bit and rational exponents. So this is the rule, and we'll practice this rule in a second. Let's take a quick discussion about notation. So uh, in our previous lesson, when we were deriving the method of first principles, we used this notation to denote that this is the derivative function. So this is f prime of x, this is the derivative of f, and we can write it like this. This new notation we inherit from Leibniz, it's the same thing. It's saying the derivative function here is equal to this. And this represents the change in y delta, the change in y over the change of x. So we know the change of y and change of x uh, represents the slope. Okay, now why do we have two notations? Well, we originally inherited this notation from Leibniz and it has its strengths uh, because it, it provides us with some detail about the function. And this notation we get from Lagrange, who uh, about 150 years after the invention of calculus by Leibniz and Newton, uh, his work was dedicated to cleaning up uh, calculus and providing it with a more solid foundation and he used this notation which is a lot easier but lacks some of the detail that Leibniz's notation uses. Regardless you're going to have to get comfortable with both forms of notation. Alright so let's go into this no question here. Find the derivative of this function below. Apply the rule. Okay quickly I think you can see that um, the derivative function is just this whole number, 2. So uh, what does this actually imply? What does this mean? Well, it's saying that no matter where you go on this function, this, the slope of any point on this line is going to be the same. It's going to be 2, and that should make sense to you. All right. Uh, what might not make sense is the slope of the tangent line. The tangent line um, at this line, they're coincident. Like the tangent line would lie on top of the line, which interferes with our uh, definition of a tangent line. But let's not let that get us down 
let's just think of the slope of any point on this line is going to be 2, and that should make sense. All right, so that should set us up for this question. Find the derivatives of each of these functions below. Take a moment to consider this. Well, if we graph each of these, if we think geometrically, the graph of these lines are all horizontal lines. This one passes through y, the y-axis at negative 3, this one up at positive 5, and this one actually right along the x-axis. Uh, this is another form for the x-axis. All of them are horizontal lines. The slope of a horizontal line is 0. So each of these functions have the same slope and that's zero. So here's a rule. The rule is this, the derivative of any constant is zero. Knowing this rule, let's go into this uh, question. Take a moment to consider it. Please press pause. Okay, so what's going on here? Well, if we think geometrically, this is the um, parabola. This is a parabola, and this is the same parabola, only shifted down 7, and this one's shifted up 5. But what we find is if we pick a, a value for x, the slope of the tangent line at that point is going to be the same here as it is here. This one is just going to be a parallel line to this one, the slope of the tangent the the tangents will be parallel. This one will just be seven units down, but they'll have the same slope. If we think about using the rule uh, that we that we're learning in this, that um, the slope here is going to be two x, and then a constant is just going to be zero. So two x plus zero is just going to be two x. All right. Let's go ahead and conclude this lesson with two example problems. And we're going to get um, complicated quick. So I would like you to try both, press pause and try both of these problems. Apply the rule. OK, let's take a look at this first example. So we find the derivative of our function, the change in y with respect of x. What we have to do is we have to multiply our, con our uh, coefficient by our exponent. That gives us a new coefficient, so this simplifies to 4. Then we take our exponent and we subtract 1. So here's our new derivative function. This function will tell us the slope of the tangent line at any point to this curve. All right, how about this one? This one's a lot more complicated. We have to realize that this can be rewritten as x to the 1 half power. Well, x to the 1 half power in the denominator can be moved to the numerator by, making, by changing the sign of the exponent. So we get something like this. Now we apply our rule. Our exponent times our coefficient gives us our new coefficient, and then our exponent minus 1. So we get something like this. But because the original problem was given as a square root, we shouldn't leave our answer with a different form. So even though this is a val is a correct um, solution, we're going to change the notation so that it matches the original problem. So what we need to do is we need to change that, put that in the denominator to make it positive, and then we need to change this into this, and then this becomes our our final form, our final answer for this problem.